one, Tarnation! Uh, I meant to do that. Howdy folks, this is Apple Geek, and I am back with My Little Pony Season 9. This time it's Episode 11 that I get to watch. And I don't know about all of you guys, I'm sure the results have been mixed for a lot of you, but for me, the last two episodes have been absolutely fantastic. There has not been a single bad episode yet this season, just good episodes and even better episodes. So, and it, once again, I've got friends hyping me and like everything that's aired, so I can't wait to see what we've got next in store here. So, um, again, no spoilers, been living in a cave. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and give this a watch. Episode 11, starting now. I know how hard you've been working on Starlet lately, Trixie. So I figured you could use a break. Oh. <gasps> Trixie, this looks amazing. It's adorable. But my job doesn't really seem like work. What oh, what is of? What is <laughs> She's got a, a pager like a smartwatch or what 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 is going on here? We're just going to wait until she comes back. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Being counselor for the students at Twilight School of Friendship is demanding, but... Oh, one sec. She's literally on call. I can relate to this so well. <laughs> what was I saying? <clears throat> oh, right. Being able to use the experiences of my checkered past to help young students feels pretty great. Oh, yum! Mmm, thanks. Trixie's not happy. I feel nothing but admiration for the work you do, but it is a little all-consuming, and I miss spending time with you. Aww. What are you talking about? We're spending time right now. Hardly. <laughs> a few seconds here and there. And she... <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Sorry. I cast a spell on the door to my office, so this bracelet goes off whenever there's a knock. Ah, okay. Worst time with her braids lately. Aww. Anyway, you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> that is Grumpy Pony. <laughs> okay! So Trixie's back in town. Looking to spend some quality time with Starlight. And she's too busy, so... Where's... Is Trixie gonna somehow get involved with the 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 counseling thing here, or is this gonna go completely? Uh, the, I'm probably way off base on that. I don't know. Clearly, Starlight has a little lesson to learn here, or something. I, I don't know where I don't know where this is going yet. I totally respect my younger so cousins' decisions to stay sea ponies, but they've never been on dry land. Uh, oh, for a visit with them student is council. Memes. Describe a shower to creatures who live in water. All the memes. So far, I've got warm and steamy. Actually, steam has water in it. Silverstream. There are a lot of students who want to see me today. I'm very curious if we're going to do anything about the sea pony thing, but that don't rely on the wet part. Oh. <sighs> well, there's clean, relaxing, um, relaxing. I don't know. A nap's relaxing too. Warm and clean are okay. Wow. I have to give this some more thought. D go check out a thesaurus from the library. My door's always open. Hi. Except for today, of course. Oh! 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 Denied! Trixie, I can't leave. It's almost spring break. Twilight and the others that's, have that's busy season. to celebrate the spring solstice in Canterlot, and I have to help the students oh. with any issues before they head home for the spring holiday. Spring solstice, that's an interesting holiday. Okay. <laughs> oh! But I hope you haven't forgotten that poor about kid, or guy, or I don't know how old he is. <laughs> the party Maud and Mudbriar are throwing. <laughs> Sunburst is coming to town. Oh no! I promise to make the cake. <gasps> how could I possibly forget about this? The faces. <laughs> the faces just never get old. <laughs> Dude, for for your sake, run away. <laughs> My pony is saying your job isn't important. The plants you make with your friends are important too. <sighs> I know. I'm sorry. 
I shouldn't have forgotten. Obviously, I need to be available to my students, but that doesn't mean I can't help with all the things we have to do. Good. Great. Another so, work-life balance episode, I guess. What are all the things we have to do? Oh, no. <laughs> Mod needs streamers for the decorations. Sunburst wants us to pick up a genuine pre equestrian Mod spring solstice wants chasing dish from the streamers? Shop. Of course he does. Oh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. wants a bouquet of flowering sticks, whatever that means. F and I thought we were both looking forward to Mrs. Cake teaching us the secret to see of her famous spring solstice cake. Oh, I <gasps> totally am. But we could just buy a cake from her. <clears throat> Oh, oh no! Could. But then we'd miss out on baking together. Plus, the time I spent flattering and convincing and begging her to share the recipe would be for nothing. <laughs> so make a cake, not buy a cake, and the great and powerful Torexi keeps our promises. Hey, why don't we just split up these jobs? I'll get the streamers and the chafing dish. You throw that thing away. Put on those sticks, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Or not. You know, why don't I just hang on to this? Wouldn't want to forget the things I just said I'd take care of. Yeah. Because I am totally going to take care of them. <sighs> you know, Starlight's beginning to channel a little bit of Twilight here with trying to do too much. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Rose, but I need a bouquet of flowering sticks set. I thought I was getting the flowering sticks. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, I'm still not exactly sure what they are. <laughs> Yeah, awkward. Okay, got it. You get the sticks. I'll get the streamers. Seriously. Right after I take care of what I'm sure is an even smaller student problem than the last one. And it's gonna be an even bigger one. I just. <laughs> that was one of the most adorable things I've ever seen. I can't figure out how to describe a towel. Serious. <laughs> Smolder, I understand the school can be a bit drafty, but that doesn't mean you can breathe fire anywhere you want. <gasps> oh! What do you mean? Oops! Trixie already picked up Sunburst Genuine Pre-Equestrian Equinox Chafing Dish. That was my job. I think. Wait. Was it? Starlight. You need to delegate somehow. Oh, great. Now Asalus is having a nice existential crisis. It's normal for a changeling to struggle with identity issues, but Counselor Starlight! When you're done, I need some synonyms Aww. for the word dry. Or really just help me explain the concept. <laughs> Wait, Mrs. Cake! I hope all the animators got to raise this last season. To learn the recipe for your Equinox cake. Oh, it's fine, dear. Trixie was already here. I told her everything she needs to know. What? Aww. No! Great and powerful Trixie might keep her promises, but the busy and distracted Starlight sure doesn't. Oh. I promised to help her today, and I haven't done a single thing! Oh, that does sound hard, dear. A and I'm not quite sure how to tell you this, but your health is glowing. It <clears throat> of course it is. <sighs> At least if her cutie mark was glowing, she'd have a more legitimate excuse. Oh, oh <laughs> It's the one place I knew I could find you. Wow! Oh, I'm sorry about today. I'm just so busy. I know. Obviously, your students are more important than your friends. <sighs> That's not... Starlight, do you have a minute? No, she does not. Actually, Silverstream, I don't. Besides, <clears throat> I need to lock up the school for the holiday, and it's time you caught the train home. I'm sure a smart and capable student like you can figure out the solution to any problem over the break. But for now, the counselor's office is closed. Well then. I have a cake to bake. Well, you know, she needed to be firm on that. Maybe could have handled it a little bit more gracefully, yeah. but... Eh. <laughs> is Hi, this Summers. cake supposed to be so sharp? <laughs> It looks really interesting. Technically, it's not symmetrical. My or yes. aesthetically pleasing. Uh. Maybe it's not the best cake, but we made it together, and that's what counts. This is an awesome I'm group of friends. Just and everything else. I'm very wow. excited. This is going to be the most we can tell. perfect party ever. And 
leave with all of your students home for the holiday, I won't have to worry about you being summoned to your office in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to take me away from this party. Except... Hello? Starlight? <laughs> Starlight? Terramar! This is a private... Character. I did not expect is that! Starlight here? I was told she'd be here! What's wrong? Oh, no. I'm Terramar, Silverstream's brother. I've been looking all over for you. Silverstream is missing! Oh, <gasps> no. <laughs> Trixie just like, yep, here we go again. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. Silverstream didn't come home? Mm -mm. I was supposed to meet her at the Mount Eris train station, but she never showed up. It's a long way between Ponyville and Mount Eris. She could be anywhere. Our parents are leading teams of hippogriffs and sea ponies, searching the land and sea between here and our home. They sent me to check the school. But the school's closed. All the students are gone. Eh, are she's hiding sure? out somewhere I at the school. I know she had a big project due for Twilight. Do you think she might have stayed to finish it? She never told me about a project. Well, to be fair, you oh. closed your office the last time she came by. Really? Uh, oh. What what kind yeah, Trixie, you don't get student to. With a problem. <laughs> the kind with too much on her plate. Starlight has always gone out of her way for her students. And I mean always. <laughs> yeah. Except apparently when it matters. This is all oh. my fault. You all go back to the party. Terramar and I will check the school. We'll find your sister. I should have known it couldn't last. <coughs> Perfection is more of a pinky thing. Oh. I wasn't going to say anything. But these flowers are just glued on, so technically... It wasn't perfect already. <laughs> but that's probably not important. Thank you! He's starting to get it! Thank it's you! Thank you! Look inside. And Mod, so you that was an awesome party. I gotta say, that you outdid yourself. No! Did the party game. <laughs> Is she in the catacombs? Not down here. I don't see her anywhere. Did you check her room? <laughs> oh, well, I guess not. Well, she's not here. The clues no, is she where isn't. she went. But look at this. A cockatrice? Could that be what her project was on? What? You don't That's think a blast from the past. For us to find a cockatrice by herself, do you? Oh no. But I'm going to find out. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so you forgot someone there, Starlight. Oh. oh what are you Ouch. doing here? We came to help. We couldn't let you handle this alone. Technically, she wasn't alone. But we wanted to help anyway. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mudbrier. All of you. But the students are my responsibility. I'm the one who didn't do my job when it actually mattered. I might share a bit of the blame for pressuring you into leaving work early. But I don't want to ruin the party. We can still have a party. A search party. Uh, can we talk about all this later? Technically, she's correct. Forest alone. <gasps> we think she went in to do research on cockatrices. What? <laughs> the gaze of the cockatrice is known to petrify any who dare to cross its path. Mm -hmm. And the reptilian birds are elusive and solitary. Where would we even start? I have a lot of experience telling ponies that I have experience with the dangerous creatures of Everfree Forest. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure, why not? <laughs> So in other words, I have no clue where I'm going. Just follow me and we'll probably run into something because that's how her luck fares. <laughs> this way. And they're just going to exit the forest and run around in circles? I don't know. Seriously? Okay. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, you're going around in circles. <sighs> <laughs> it's 
Same crossroads. Yeah, mm. Weren't we just here? Mm -hmm. Trixie, do you have any idea how to find a cockatrice? No. no. But usually, when there's a dangerous creature in the forest I don't want to meet, this is how I meet them. I, I called it! need a more concrete plan. <laughs> Suit yourself. Um, according to Silverstream's research, the cockatrice prefers rocky terrain and ample shade. Rocks and shade? Hmm, I can't imagine where we'll find that in a forest. <laughs> Actually, rocks aren't the most hospitable environment for shade trees. Technically, pine trees like Pinus Kembra or Pinus Sylvestris can grow from narrow crevasses or cracks in a rocky rhizosphere. You complete me. When is the wedding? When is the wedding? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I, I swear, that was another Big Bang Theory reference or something. I, I don't know. It's, it's too perfect. <laughs> I thought you said they were solitary. They are. This must be some kind of migration. At least there's no sign of Silverstream. I can't imagine getting caught in the middle of that flock. It's just lucky we're all over here and they're all over there. <sighs> Not for long. Uh oh. Technically, don't even say it. <laughs> don't look at them. Their gaze can turn you to stone. So what do we do? <sighs> Run! Oh man, we've never seen a whole flock of these before. <laughs> Whoa! Starlight! I'm so sorry. That was get out of here. I know. Too Hang close. On. We can't leave. Silverstream might still be in the forest. Stay here. I'll get the others. Be careful! <laughs> the fucking is coming from everywhere! The great and powerful Trixie fears no luck! And just yeah, uh, wonderful time. Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, nice distraction. <laughs> Man, Sunburst is really jumpy. <laughs> oh. We've got to get out of here. I'm not leaving him. Oh no! Mudbriar's been turned to stone. Oh, dude, there's. I didn't think I could love him anymore. <laughs> That was priceless. Uh, they're gonna find some way to turn him back, obviously, but. <laughs> Ooh, the tree! Okay. They can fly so over the wall. A place to hide. There could be hundreds more cockatrices on the way. If this really is a migration, it'll take a full lunar cycle to complete. Oh, I have to get Ooh. word back to our parents that Silverstream could be surrounded by those lunar terrifying cycle. birds. And as handsome as Mudbriar is now, we should probably catch one of them to turn him back to normal. Ah. <sighs> this is all my fault. I'm never taking time off from my counseling duties again. <laughs> that seems a little extreme. Really? <laughs> if I hadn't galloped off to a holiday celebration, Silverstream would be safe with her family, and you'd all be enjoying Mott's party. Hmm. Instead, my student is missing, we're surrounded by a flock of petrifying chicken snakes, and Mott's <laughs> boyfriend was turned into a hunk of rock! You got the hunk part. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea if Silverstream even came to Everfree at all, but I have no idea where else to look! I missed who wrote this episode, but you are a genius. What? Oh, that's the- She's up there, isn't house. she? Apparently it grew from the Tree of Harmony and- <gasps> Of course! That should have been the first place we looked! Doi! I should have thought of that too, actually, but- <laughs> Don't break him! <laughs> Hey there! That one looks different. What? 
She made a friend. Oh. This is Edith. She's helping me with my project. <laughs> I don't understand. After you encouraged me to solve my own problem, I decided to get my project done before I left. That way I could really focus on my family during my visit. The school was closed, so I came here. Why didn't you tell anyone? Yeah, Mom and Dad are worried sick. Communication! Oh no, I'm so sorry. Once Edith volunteered to help, I guess I lost track of time. Mm. Cockatrices are really friendly if you know how to interact with them. Oh. Professor Fluttershy would be proud. If you figured out how to trigger her nesting response. They are really fascinating creatures. Did you know that they migrate to the Everfree Forest once a year? Can you imagine what would happen if you stumbled on a whole flock of these? <laughs> I have a few ideas. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry you got turned to stone looking for me, but I'm glad Edith was able to turn you back. How do you tell the difference? <laughs> I have mixed feelings. <laughs> Technically, I will always be a stick pony, but the experience has given me an even deeper appreciation for the density and permanence of rock. Swoon. <laughs> I should get going, but I wanted to thank you for everything you did to help find her. I just wish I hadn't abandoned her in the first place. This is one of the best episodes ever. Starlight, you didn't abandon her. Well, that's maybe a bit much, well but... Have. And even though it turned out all right, great. things could have been a lot worse. You can't be expected to supervise your students every second of every day. This I'm is not true. So sure. I like that you're always available, but it kind of makes it okay to come to you with stuff that maybe isn't super important. Uh -huh. Of course, being a school counselor is a big responsibility, but always being at work isn't fair to any pony, especially me. Do you think if I had set times to see me, it might help you decide what you really need to talk about? To be honest, Excellent you idea. really weren't very helpful with the other stuff anyway. Oh! Wait, what? Oh! Fantastic, every pony. Who wants a piece of Mrs. Cake's famous petrified dessert? Wow. Oh, me at petrified. <laughs> <laughs> This is a great episode. I, I, I love this episode. The, the <laughs> you know, it it's taken a while, but we finally got to the point where Starlight's got her own group of friends that she can do things with without the main six involved. And th this is... This is awesome. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned, everyone. I will be right back with my thoughts on this. So, Starlight is having trouble with time management. <laughs> she failed to set up any kind of a scheduling system for her counseling services and instead just accepted any and all walk-ins. And that's not to say that you can't have walk-ins for things like, you know, actual emergencies where something is urgent and requires attention right now, but that's not really what we saw for pretty much all of the issues that were presented here. And really none of those were urgent emergencies, except for the one at the very end, of course. And, you know, if it's not truly an emergency, you should have an appointment. As it was pointed out, that probably would have stopped the students from taking advantage of her time with all kinds of random little things. And, you know, and it's not to say they're unimportant. You know, I mean, things like helping Yona with her braids and helping Silverstream with trying to describe dry land to her cousins who have never seen it before. You know, things like that aren't necessarily unimportant, but they're just not really the best use of time for the school's counselor and there's others who could have assisted them with those things. You know, frankly, Silverstream just needed to check out a thesaurus from the school library, and I'm willing to bet Twilight has at least a dozen of them stashed around there somewhere. But now, while I certainly admire Starlight's willingness and desire to help the students any way that she can, there has to be reasonable limits and expectations set, because there is only so much of her to go around. She needs to have a life too, which includes spending quality time with Trixie and her other friends. And, you know, honestly, by constantly running off from her friends, leaving them hanging, and, you know, forgetting about their uh, parties and things like that, just to constantly be there at the office to, for all these little issues the students have, that's not really setting a good example for the students either, because, I mean, here this is a school of friendship, and she's ignoring her own friends in order to work. 
you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that we really saw the students seeing much of that actually going on, but still, not a good example to to set for them. <laughs> And uh, here again, we also saw the return of a bad habit of Starlight's. You know, granted that's on a much smaller scale than usual, but once again, she tried to solve a problem of hers with a quick magic fix in the form of this bracelet that let her know whenever somebody was knocking on her office door at the school, so she could quick pop back and deal with that issue. You know, while it's admittedly rather clever, the issue here was the fact that she was spending too much time, you know, catering to all these student issues and not prioritizing things right and you know and not getting to spend time with friends properly either you know, and rather than address the problem directly she apparently thought that she could just find a way to effectively be in two places at once and cover all the bases herself which obviously did not go as planned now of course as I've said before in some past commentaries I don't remember which ones I don't necessarily have a problem with seeing old habits come back to haunt characters in this show. We've seen it with many different characters many different times. Some people don't like that. I get that, but honestly this is reflective of real life. Bad habits are very hard to break. And also they tend to be very easy to fall back on even after successfully spending a lot of time staying away from those habits. That's the way that bad habits work. And Honestly, you know, this really wasn't that bad compared to some times in the past for Starlight. Unlike in the past, uh, you know, here she wasn't trying to conjure up some kind of ridiculously crazy over-the-top spell to whammy her students or her friends or even herself or, or whatever. Rather, it was just you know, a simple little communication spell of sorts that was perfectly harmless in and of itself. And uh, you know, frankly, not really uh, very different than some... Uh, quick little magic shortcuts that Twilight uses uh, from time to time. And of course there is also the hyperactive teleporting. <laughs> I think there is like a grand total of like some 42 or 43 teleports in this one episode alone. I mean that's got to be an Academy record. <laughs> but you know again Twilight has done similar things with uh, with crazy teleporting and stuff at, at times. You know, the problem here wasn't so much the kind of magic that she was using as it was the reason why she was using it. In trying to constantly bounce back and forth between the students and her own friends, she was effectively failing on both fronts. Because she wasn't able to even fully carry out a conversation with Trixie, let alone plan that party because of constantly, constantly uh, popping back and forth. But the quality of her student counseling was also suffering because... She was just kept trying to quickly dismiss all these little problems that the students had and wasn't spending any quality time with them either. It was just way too much going on on too many fronts and she couldn't handle it all. So, uh, you know, I have had to wonder with this, like how did this problem even start in the first place? I mean, we know she's been proud of her job, but like how did it get to this point? Granted, making herself too available was largely it but like why did she allow it to to get that far why does she get so sucked into it and i was thinking you know even though that starlight has uh, regained a lot of her self-confidence and stuff and she's grown an awful lot since she you know has turned over a new leaf and been trying to you know make friends and make something good of out of herself i i get the feeling that she views this counseling work as a way to make ongoing amends for her past misdeeds she made it very clear that she really enjoys the opportunity to use her past experiences in order to help the students with their issues because it makes her feel good and as such it's easy to see why she gets so wrapped up in it. And of course there's absolutely nothing wrong with that in concept and I'm sure that she's thrilled to be able to make something good come from her mistakes. Where she fell short is properly defining the parameters and scope of her help as a counselor and that failure of that of course led to her getting completely swamped with all these issues that weren't necessarily the best use of her time or even relevant to the experiences that she wants to use for counseling and of course trixie didn't necessarily help the situation a whole lot either <laughs> granted she had every right to be angry with trixie or er, angry with starlight well oh, the name's mixed up here Trixie had every right to be angry with Starlight due to the way that she kept popping in and out and not actually spending any real quality time with Trixie. And to her credit, Trixie actually did pretty well in staying in control of her emotions. I mean, 
yes, she is. Uh, you know, there's she was obviously about to blow a fuse many different times in this episode, but the fact that she held it together and didn't quite go that far, I mean, given the situation, I commend her for that. <laughs> and, you know, Trixie really does admire the work that Starlight does and supports her in it. And she knows full well what it's like to try and overcome past mistakes and make a positive difference in the world. And, you know, she even stuck up for Starlight when Terramar accused her of being a bad counselor. She, she just very understandably wants to get some of her best friend's time as well without having to go stand in line at the school counselor's office. And, it, you know, it, it occurred to me too, this isn't necessarily just a matter of time with friends, but also a time with family. I mean, you guys all know as well as I do, family is, is a thing that goes beyond just blood relation. And, you know, looking at this group, Starlight, Trixie, Sunburst, Maud, and now even Mudbriar, they're all becoming a very close-knit group of friends, very much like the main six. And based on what we've seen in their interactions together, uh, to me at least, it's really starting to feel like they've become a, a bit of a family. You know, they've all been loners in one way or another, you know, all, all socially awkward in their own unique ways, and now they've all come together a as a group to share their awkwardness together. And they've become very good friends. And I think that it's... A good enough friendship where it's moving on to now kind of a family thing and you know th this actually is a rather good analog for the brony fandom in general because you know it's similar to how so many of us have come together from all these different walks of life and finding acceptance despite all of our own social deficiencies and, and such and becoming a family of sorts and I you know I think this just further highlights why Trixie was so angry with Starlight because this is probably the first time in a very long time where she's been with a group of ponies that feels like uh, like a family to her, probably the family that she never had. And, you know, seeing Starlet neglecting that family is not sitting well with her. And yes, I know there is Jackpot, who is supposedly Trixie's dad, but that is, it's not been explicitly confirmed, it's kind of left open-ended. But even assuming that he is, it seems clear that he doesn't have any significant role in her life because she never mentions him in any way, have never seen them together, etc. So this seems like the only family that Trixie really has right now. And you know, I, this situation also, I think, is reflective of a real-life problem that a lot of families struggle with, namely the issue of you know, family members being workaholics. That's basically what we were seeing here with Starlight in that pager bracelet of hers. It seems like it, it seems to me that she felt like she was letting the students down in, in some way if she wasn't always there for them, which uh, ended up leading to her not being able to tear herself fully away from the office for fear of not being there when somebody needed her. When finally confronted about this, she of course did finally put her hoof down by closing her office and going to the party with her friends, which was that, that's a good step, that's commendable. However, because she didn't handle her job properly in the first place and dismissed Silverstream too abruptly there at the end, this caused an emergency work situation where she then had to go out and look for Silverstream, thus kind of ruining their party after all. And that's, you know, frankly, it's the very problem that she had tried to avoid in the first place. <laughs> now, I, I will say, you can't put all the blame on Starlight for this uh, for this particular one. You have to put some of the blame on Silverstream because, first of all, she should have known better than to purposefully miss her train home without telling anyone and, furthermore, running out into the Everfree Forest on her own to search for creatures that are known to be very dangerous. She really should have known better. And also, Starlight did tell her that she needed to catch her train home for spring break. And that is advice that she blatantly ignored. So again, not entirely Starlight's fault for the situation that Silverstream got herself into. That said, if Starlight had managed her counseling sessions properly, then she probably wouldn't have wasted so much time on these other, you know, things that were not so important and probably would have gotten to Silverstream's real problem before she had to close her office, and thus we could have avoided this whole problem. So, yeah, moral of the story in general, you know, while it's it's absolutely fine to take pride in one's work, uh, especially work like this, it's very commendable, you know, just make sure that you have your priorities straight, because no matter how important your work is, 
there are other things that are more important. It's not to say your work isn't important, just that it needs to be managed properly so that it does not consume your entire life. Uh, just a, a little aside here <laughs> for Mod and Mud Prior. As you saw in this episode, I, I got a huge kick out of their interactions together here. I could not stop laughing. <laughs> and just honestly, how long is it going to be before these two get married? And it's clear they are made for each other. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, I love seeing how both of them have grown since meeting each other, too. I mean, Maude showed more emotional expression in this one episode than I think all of her past appearances combined. And Mudbriar, wow, he is he's becoming aware of how he comes across to others in his social interactions, where he's realizing that stating things that are technically correct can sometimes be rather insensitive in the current context, or even downright hurtful at times. You know, it's like sometimes even though it's it's technically correct, it's not really important to spell this out right now. <laughs> that type of thing. And, you know, as I'm, I'm pretty sure Maude has had something to do with that, with getting him to uh, pay attention in that regard. But, um, you know, it's just, like I said, they, they mesh so well. I, I think it's just a matter of time before they end up tying the knot. Um, and I'm actually starting to wonder, you know, one of my wish list items, of course, is to see a wedding for Big Mac and Sugar Bell. Now I'm thinking it'd be cool to have a double wedding for Big Mac, Sugar Bell, and Maude and Mudbriar. Are we going to see that in the show before it's over? Probably not. I'm not going to get my hopes up on that, but uh, you know, one can always hope at least. Yeah, yeah, maybe fanfic material if nothing else. <laughs> but uh, you know, even if we don't get to see a wedding, I'm I'm sure Mod and Mudbrayer are going to have a great life together. And just a funny thought that popped into my head: Wouldn't it be hilarious if those two end up having a fall that's just like Pinkie Pie? I mean. <laughs> Can you even imagine the family dynamic with that? That would be <laughs> amazing. Uh, but anyway, um, it's, uh, one last thing I, I just have to, to touch on just, just a little bit. Spring solstice, really? <laughs> really? That, that's not a thing? You know, the, the sol uh, solstices c occur during summer and winter. In spring and autumn, you have uh, an equinox. You know, it has to do with the position of the sun relative to the equator. And, you know, it's kind of a science thing. And, you know, even let, let's just let's just say, you know, obviously the sun and moon are controlled manually in this world, at least to some degree. And it, since that determines the seasons and everything, let's just say maybe the, it, it works differently in this world or it uh, or, or whatever. But then they went and mi mixed in the word equinox, too, in the script. Like sometimes they called it the solstice, sometimes the equinox and went back and forth. So I'm like, clearly this is a writing oops <laughs> somehow. Maybe even they, they realized it and tried to go back and fix it and then didn't fix it all the places or something. I really don't know what happened there. But, uh, you know, honestly, with as goofed up as the seasons and everything are in this world anyway, this doesn't really make things much worse. It's just one of those fun little things to be like, huh? How does this work here? <laughs> So, anyway, I, I just had to say a little something about that because it's it's such as, like, wait, what? <laughs> but anyway, that's really all I've got in this one, everyone. Um, you know, great lesson for Starlight and for us, of course, and also great to see how Trixie and the others are maturing as well. I really can't wait to see what the next episode brings. It's just been a great season so far. So, till then, later.